Hey, I wrote a poem and I wanted to share it with everyone. It's called Her Waters Break. Here it goes. I have no fight left in me. I'm tired. Tired of barking for innocence, for truth. Tired of waiting for God to fulfill his promise. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You made a promise. Where are you? How am I to enjoy the curves of her trees? The scent of her leaves when hanging from her branches are the bleeding and broken corpses of her children. How to walk in the fullness of a golden green field when the blades beneath my bare feet draw blood and the fields turn red and barren with despair. You made a promise. You said at our final hour you would help us. Is this not the final hour? God help us. God help me. I have no fight left in me. But their blades are sharp. And their hunger is relentless. And now I am a bear growling and roaring into the night. One moment a blade, one moment a harmless bird, then a blade, then a friend, then a blade, then a blade, then a blade. Now I growl most of the time. It's safer that way because it's usually a blade. You want me to smell this soft white flower, but its stem is a grenade. You want me to rest in the honey of the beloved, but the hive is on stolen land. You want me to revel in the transcendence of your cosmos, but a murdered child lies beside me. If this is your intention, then you are not my God. If this is your design, then take me from this world. <laughs> how sinister, how corrupted. This is non-duality, they say, predator and prey. So what then? You expect me to feel all of this, to witness all of this, and dwell in peace. To walk around with a knife through my heart, and a smile of compassion on my face. Those who don't feel or care about the hive on stolen land love this non-duality. Suits them fine. What a great spiritual discourse to hide behind. The heartless telling the growling, barking, bleeding ones that they need to transcend. Those who don't feel but carry on about their so-called peaceful lives do not live in peace, but a violent complacency. And so it remains. For those who don't look away. For those who live with a knife through the heart and blood pouring onto the glades. How do we find peace when the corpse of her murdered child lies beside us? I don't believe such a thing is possible because I have tried. In my trying, I learned to stop trying. And even in my stopping, my surrendering, it doesn't take away 
the pain. And I've run out of patience and compassion for people who selfishly carry on as if the branches aren't bleeding. I can't help but growl and bark at these people who don't feel, who step over the body of my dead child and gorge themselves as they drink the honey on stolen land. God says vengeance is mine, but I am that. And I say, to hell with all of you, takers, rapers, exploiters, negotiators. If vengeance is God's and I am that, then you are judged. And you will be washed away in her waters. Because I can't step over another murdered child while you scroll through your Netflix programming. I can't feel this pain anymore. I'm tired of barking and growling and bleeding. And don't tell me I need to transcend. Only the ones who don't feel say that. The ones gorging themselves on their own violent privilege. You try live with a knife in your heart and not bark and growl at violent complacency. I am bottomed out and there is no transcending what we have become. You've heard my judgment. God can wash this place clean or take me from it. He made a promise. You promised. You promised me. I'm with